Hello, I'm Eric Gracie. I'm a management forester for the Department of Forestry at UK and part of the extension team. Um, we're coming up on a year of programs from, from the woods today, and a lot of the programming will uh, centered around Dr. Crocker's invasive species, uh, identification and uh, eradication and why you want to uh, eradicate these species. Also, uh, Dr. Moeller has done the uh, Forestry 101 and talked about a lot of uh, methods on how to improve your woodlot, and a lot of those methods are going to require the removal of unwanted trees and shrubs. So today, the, the, I'm going to try to demonstrate some of the most uh, common methods that you're going to use uh, for eradicating those species, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, learn something about the chemicals and timing and application along the way. All right, so the first uh, application method that we're going to demonstrate or I'm going to demonstrate is a foliar application. And this is simply where you're taking an herbicide and you're wetting the leaf surface uh, um, with the herbicide and it will systemically be absorbed through the leaves and will kill the, uh, uh, the intended target. Um, the key with the foliar application is you need the, uh, the target to be actively growing. Uh, for it to be effective. So you don't want to try to do this after um, an extended uh, dry period. Um, and, but any time in the year that you've got active, uh, active growth, the foliar application will work. There's several good herbicide options for these foliar applications. One I'm going to use today is just a glyphosate, uh, and that's uh, commonly referred to as Roundup. Um, and we're, we're dealing here with a stand of invasive vinca or periwinkle, and it is really hard to control with just herbicide itself. You'll either want to use a surfactant, and a surfactant basically will help break down the, that waxy uh, leaf layer that's, that uh, a lot of vines like winter creeper, um, uh, like the vinca, English ivy, you cannot just control those with herbicide themselves. Uh, if you don't have a surfactant available, one of the things I like to do is take a weed eater and you come in and you're just basically bruising the leaves and stems. You're not trying to weed eat this stand, but you're just trying to rough it up and you'll get really good uh, herbicide uptake from, uh, from doing this. Okay, so when you're applying the herbicide, the key is just to wet the foliage, you don't have to uh, wet it to the point of where it's so saturated that the herbicide is running off of the leaf surface. All you're doing is wasting herbicide at that point. So it's, I like to use a pretty high pressure so you get uh, more of a, a mist and smaller water droplets. It, it seems to adhere better to the leaves. Uh, and so it's, there's really nothing to it. So our next application method is going to be a basil spray, and a basil spray is uh, simply uh, applying herbicide uh, to the lower 12 to 15 inches of the tree, uh, and we're going to use a chemical called Garlon 4A, or it's triclopyr, that's an ester base, and you will mix it with uh, a basil oil, it can be mixed with crop oil, uh, kerosene, or diesel fuel, and what that does is this this uh, mix will allow the herbicide to penetrate through the bark and will uh, kill your targeted uh, tree species. It works really good on uh, th uh, thin bark uh, species such as beech, red maple, sugar maple, um, and uh, the other thing that I really like about it is it can be done year round as long as there's not snow on the ground. So with the basil spray, you can use any type of hand sprayer. Uh, oftentimes folks will use a backpack sprayer. Um, one of the things that you want to look for is you'll want a solid cone tip or a flat fan uh, tip on, on your sprayer. And the other little trick is to not over pressurize your sprayer. You're, otherwise, when you're applying it, you're going to get a lot of splash back and you're going to put out more chemical that, than you need. And you're also going to create a, a circle of death there and possibly kill some untargeted species. What I like to do is, uh, this is a flat sprayer. You can get back and you're going to want to do the, the uh, from 15 inches all the way down to the, to the ground. You can also, uh, lay the, the sprayer just right on the, the tip, right onto the, uh, the stem itself, and that prevents a lot of overspray from happening. And you'll want to work your way all the way around the stem so uh, it's completely uh, 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 sprayed from uh, uh, all 360 degrees. 
you'll see that I'm also using a die and the herbicide die works really well if you're doing uh, um, from knowing where you've been what's been treated okay so when you're doing the hack and squirt you're basically going to make a 45 degree angle cut with your hatchet apply about a milliliter of herbicide into that cut that you've made so you want to make a, a cut per inch of diameter um, you want to check your labels on that some uh, require a, a, a less but typically you're going to do one cut per diameter <coughs> So as you can see, this cut was starting to want to close up on me. So what you can do is you can actually uh, peel this back with your hatchet and let the uh, herbicide run down the hatchet into the cut. And because you're not using much chemical, a little squirt bottle like this will go uh, last you a, a good half day uh, and you can uh, refill at lunch. Okay, so the next uh, herbicide application method is what they call a cut stump. And uh, you can do this on any size hardwood stump. Uh, softwood stump's not going to sprout, so you would not need to uh, uh, spray those. Um, and on little, uh, like this little clump of box elder, uh, a, a brush cutter on a, a weed eater works really well. It also is a really good tool for a uh, uh, bush honeysuckle. And um, any of your uh, foliar herbicides will work. Uh, as far as timing goes, once again, uh, you want to avoid air, uh, times of heavy sap flow. And that's just because that sap flow is going to push the herbicide out instead of having that uh, those stumps absorb that herbicide into the root system. Okay, so we've uh, we've made quick work of our uh, little clump of box elder here. So one of the keys to, to getting the stump uh, uh, cut stump application done is you want to come back in within a few minutes of after of making those cuts uh, and apply the herbicide. And this really is a good kind of a tag team project where you have somebody that's running the brush cutter or the chainsaw, and then somebody's coming behind with the herbicide. Um, if we had larger uh, stumps, we you could get by with just spraying that outer inch of wood where that cambium layer is. Where these are so small, we're gonna just uh, spray the entire stump. Okay, so the last uh, herbicide application we're going to talk about today is a chainsaw girdle. And there's a couple ways you can do this. A, a um, Real common is, is to do a single chainsaw girdle. So like this catalpa behind me, it's too big for the hack and squirt. So it, it just makes more sense to use a chainsaw. You don't need a big giant log and chainsaw. I've got this little saw with a 14 inch uh, a bar on it, uh, lightweight, easy to use for this application. And so once you, you finish your uh, girdle with the chainsaw, you want to go in about a half an inch to an inch into the wood, and you'll treat that girdle with the same herbicide that you're using for the cut stump or your hack and squirt. There's another option if you have um, uh, trees of desirable species that are in close proximity, but you want to remove one of those because they're competing against each other You can use a double chainsaw girdle and that's where you'll do uh, your first girdle and then you'll place a second girdle above it uh, Or below that first uh, girdle and that double chainsaw girdle will slowly kill that tree out without the use of herbicide uh, What happens is if you get same species in close proximity They may have some roots that have fused together or being off the same root uh, uh, system and you have a chance of killing uh, the, the, the tree that you're trying to uh, to promote So as you can see, you want to make sure the girdle goes all the way around the tree. Uh, and 
on a tree this size, it's going to be hard to just have a perfectly symmetrical girdle. So when you get to the opposite side where you started, you want to make sure that the, the girdles overlap and that's going to stop that water flow and nutrient flow to the tree uh, without it just being a perfectly round circle. So you're going to take your herbicide, you're going to spray it right there into the girdle. All right, hopefully the videos today and the demonstration of different herbicide methods will help you with your uh, uh, herbicide applications on your property, whether it's invasive species control or improving your woods. Um, with any herbicides, make sure you follow the label directions on the appropriate uh, mixing rate, PPE, and remember to always remove uh, uh, children and pets from the herbicide areas.